So what's going on guys, it is JM, it is Three Boxing. Make sure you guys subscribe to this channel before you click onto any of the videos. Also comment below in the comment section if you guys have any opinions on what I'm saying in any of my videos. And before I get into the topic of this video today, I'd just like to say I'm trying to get this channel to 100 subscribers. So if you guys could help me do that, it really would be appreciated. Right now I'm on about 60 and I know that's not a lot of subscribers, but at the end of the day it's just me promoting this channel on my Twitter page at Speed Boxing, me and a couple of hashtags, that's all it is. But I'd like to come on here and talk to you guys about boxing and if I help the channel grow, it, well if you guys help the channel grow, then we could do more things like have live discussions and have live streams when fights are happening and get into discussions, you know what I mean? Just I like to talk to you guys about boxing because in my social life my friends are not really massive boxing fans whereas I am a massive boxing fan so I like to come on here and talk to you guys and give you guys the latest boxing news and basically just event to you guys so if you guys could help me get to 100 subscribers it really would be appreciated anyway let's get into the topic of this video so what's going on guys let's talk about this topic today and the topic is Errol Spence Jr or Terence Crawford will that fight ever happen is that the next big American fight down the line if all goes to plan if these guys keep on winning and looking good is that going to be the next big American fight is that going to be the next Tommy Hearns Sugar Ray Leonard you're blowing it you're blowing it is that going to be that next kind of fight and a lot of people are saying yes on boxing forums online and on YouTube comments people are saying yeah Terence Crawford and Neville Spence Jr these two are going to collide eventually and so far You've got Terence Crawford, unified light welterweight champion of the world. Has looked fantastic recently, Terence Crawford. is definitely one of the best fighters in the world and he's looking to become the undisputed light welterweight champion. He's looking to take on other unified champion, Julius Ndongo, who's really, really, really looked good, Julius Ndongo. He's a guy who's came out of nowhere. Like, he came and totally flattened Troyanovsky out in Russia. Like, they thought, you know what, we'll have a little cherry pick here, bring this guy over from Africa and we'll beat him in a couple of rounds. No, bang, on the floor, lost your title, Julius Ndongo, new IBF champion. And then Ricky Burns thought, you know what, I'll fight this guy, this could be an easy unification for me. Nope, totally got outclassed by Julius Ndongo. So Julius Ndongo is looking very well and that's not an easy fight for Terence Crawford. But I think Terence Crawford will be able to beat Julius Ndongo if he manages to figure out the awkward style of Julius Ndongo, which I think he could do because he seems to work out most styles, Terence Crawford, and then if he manages to pick up the undisputed light weight title, then maybe he could fight somebody like Manny Pacquiao, be Manny Pacquiao's final opponent, and I expect him to defeat Manny Pacquiao if the two fighters were to meet and send him into retirement, and then the world is Terence Crawford's oyster. Then he can move up to 147 pounds and say, you know what guys, I'm coming for you now, and You've got Errol Spence as well. Errol Spence went over to the UK and ripped the title off Kell Brook, um, breaking the orbital bone in Kell Brook's eye, in the other eye, similar to the injury he picked up against Gennady Golovkin. And he made Kell Brook quit in that fight, and he just totally bludgeoned Kell Brook down in the last couple of rounds of that fight. Don't get me wrong, the first six, seven rounds were very competitive in that fight, because Kell Brook is a very good fighter, and he tried to give it his all against Evel Spence, but in the end, Evel Spence relentless pressure and the body shots, the fucking body shots that Evel Spence puts on you, I'm telling you now, they don't look good, they don't look good for you, I mean, like, Evel Spence must be one of the best body punchers in boxing today, the way he manages to place the body shots, he's so accurate with them when he gets on that inside, and that totally broke Hellbook down, I think, and the hard shots were just too much for him, and he's got a similar style to a Marvin Hagler, um, Errol Spence where he's not a massive one punch knockout artist but he just totally breaks you down and bludgeons you to the floor almost like uh, Marvin Hagler used to do and then you've got Terence Crawford switch hitter he likes to fight out of orthodox and southpaw whatever takes his fans there Som sometimes you might think you know what I'm going to fight this fight in southpaw I'm going to fight this round in orthodox you know what I mean that's what he does in there Terence Crawford he just likes to play about he can adjust the styles and the fight that impressed me with Terence Crawford was the Victor Postal fight and a lot of people then go the Victor Postal fight oh that fight was boring that was a snooze fest <sighs> like to me I thought that was a very good performance I understand why people might think it's boring because it was a very technical kind of fight but the way he managed to totally use Victor Postal style against him was a very good technical move from Terence Crawford, he went in there, 
he knew what Victor Postal likes to do far on the back foot, use his height and reach advantage. And that's what Victor Postal did against Lucas Matisse. He boxed off the back foot, managed to break Matisse down on the back foot, using his height and reach, jabbing, hitting him with power shots. And Matisse couldn't really do anything because he was the smaller man. And Terence Crawford was a smaller man against Victor Postal as well. But he went there and he thought, nah, mate, I'm going to come in here, I'm going to use your style against you. And that's exactly what he did. He boxed off the back foot, moved around the ring, switch hitting, totally frustrating Victor Postal because Victor Postal was having to come to Terence Crawford and Victor Postal don't fight like that. That's not his thing. He likes to just play on the back foot and box off the back foot. He doesn't want to come forward. He doesn't want to fight on the front foot and that totally frustrated him and that allowed Terence Crawford to get the victory. So that was a very masterful performance by Terence Crawford and since then he's four guys like John John Molino and John John Molino is a good fighter. He's one of these fighters. He's very hit and miss like against Favodnikov. He looked very well but Favodnikov is a very crude fighter anyway, crude slugger. So Molina managed to use his jab in that against um, Provodnikov and get the um, unanimous decision victory there. But then he fought Terence Crawford and he was just way out of his depth against Terence Crawford, like totally there. Terence Crawford just went in there, dominated every round and stopped him within eight or nine rounds. And then he fought Felix Diaz in his last fight and totally dominated him as well. And Felix Diaz was no more. This was a 2008 Olympic gold medalist, a guy who whose only loss was to Lamont Peterson in that fight. A lot of people thought that Felix Diaz won that fight. But then you've also got Evel Spence, who's looking for a fight against Keith Furman. And Keith Furman's out with an injury at the minute. I think I want to see the Evel Spence-Keith Furman fight next. People are saying Evel Spence could fight Sean Porter. That could be a good fight as well. But I'd like to see the Evel Spence-Keith Furman fight because it's unification. It is a unification fight, and I think Errol Spence could win that fight based on body shots. Like I said earlier, Errol Spence, fantastic body um, puncher, and he does it very well. And Keith Furman, he, he no like the body shot. He no like the body shot at all. Like we saw it when he fought Louis Colazzo, hit him with that body shot. He looked like he was going to crumble like a cookie in there. Keith Furman, he was in pain when he got hit with that body shot by Louis Collazo. And when he fought Sean Porter as well, Porter was digging in with a couple of body shots and he was feeling these body shots. So I think with the way that Errol Spence hits to the body, very accurate, very hard, he could beat Keith Furman with that. And I think he might know that. Like he knows that. He's mentioned this before, I think, Errol Spence. He knows that Keith Furman can be hurt with a body shot. So if he goes in there, he's going to have to try and do that against Keith Furman. And Keith Furman can't allow him to do that. So it'll be very interesting. But if all goes to plan, like I just said, if Errol Spence gets these victories over guys like Sean Porter and Keith Furman and Terence Crawford manages to get the victory over Julius Ndongo to become the undisputed champion and then fight Manny Pacquiao and get the win there, then these guys have got to meet, these guys have got to see each other, and I think that could be a very, very good fight further down the line. A lot of people agree with me. Comment below in the comment section. It is JM, it is D-Bot.